Okay. Hello. It's been 20 minutes, so I am back. And I am going to do the uh, final shaping and put it in a couple of bannetons. I'm using my, my ovals. Just two. These are nine inch. I have 10 inch as well. Either one works. It makes no difference. They are interchangeable. Now, on the final shaping, I'm gonna do this a little bit slower than I normally would, so you can really see what I'm doing. But the first thing I have to do is get it off the breadboard, and then I'm gonna flip it up, side down, so that, remember how we put some flour on the top? Now that's on the bottom. So this part is the sticky part. So we're gonna just stretch it out a little bit, and, I'm gonna, I try to work out some of these whole issues I've got. Now there's two, there's several ways of, of uh, shaping your bread and any way is fine. It's really, I don't think it's all that important. The first way I have is just to bring it over and fold it about two thirds of the way and then seal it a little bit then stretch it a little more and pull it over and do it about two thirds, and I like to seal it a little to tighten it up, but I don't know if that helps. Now, you're gonna do one more fold like that, and seal it down, and then stretch it out here, and roll, roll, roll. This is the easiest way I know. Now, I'm gonna pinch off these ends to sort of seal them, and if I were making a batard, I would simply tuck it under like that and roll it back and forth to get a nice tight top. But I am going to do a boule. So I want to get it in a nice round ball. So I just round it, round it, round it. And I like a nice tight ball. You get better oven spring that way. I'm not sure if that's what's causing my issue with the crumb, but I don't think so. I really think it was my stretch and folds. Okay, that's nice and tight. So you just turn it over, pick it up, and drop it in your bowl. Now you can, you can tighten it, kind of tighten it up if you want, pinch it together a little bit, but it keeps coming undone, so I don't even bother. Now, this isn't very round. Okay, well, that's good. Good enough. It's not round. It doesn't need to be. And then a little rice flour on the top, just enough to keep this plastic from sticking. Now, this isn't really going to rise much. It's going right in the refrigerator. So it's not going to poof up at all. That's it. I'm just sticking it in the fridge. So let's do the second one. Get it off the breadboard. Flip it over. It's really easy. Got a big bubble there. Let's pop it. There we go. Okay. Less handling the better, that guy said. So now here's another way of doing it. You stretch it out and stretch it out. Then you can fold it, fold it, fold it, fold it, fold it, and then roll, roll, roll. Anyway works. Now I gotta pinch down those ends and seal that. There we go. And then make a ball. and seal that seam on the bottom. That's what you're trying to do is get a good seal on the bottom, a good, nice, nice, tight ball on top. There's a couple of tricks to getting oven spring and this is the very first one. The next one is to spray them before you put them in that hot oven, but we'll, we'll work on that. Right now, we're just getting in, in for the cold proof. These are gonna stay until tomorrow morning. And it is now 
2.22 in the afternoon. So they're going to stay a good long while. They'll be in there until about 6 o'clock in the morning when I get up. Okay. I don't know why I pinch it. It doesn't help. This one's a little more round. It's a little better. I don't think you can tell, but they both are very nice. That's it. So I have two more that I have to do. I think I get flour. I forgot my, I forgot my apron. Oh, well. Anyway, uh, I have two more loaves to do that I'm going to take out right now. They're in my oven with the light on, oven off. I preheated it to 110 for about a half an hour. Then I turned it off and put my dough in. It's ready to come out now. It's been four hours. And for that, I just do the same thing. They have to have the bench rest. So, oh, I put away my toe scraper. What was I thinking? I'm done. Huh. You can see how much this has grown. I mean, this started way down here. So it's doubled. It doesn't have to. I've had times when it didn't. And that was fine. It still rose, it still made great bread. It just, sometimes it rises and with this warm weather and, uh oh, I didn't put any flour on my counter. Oh no. Uh oh. <laughs> Yikes. Got in a rush. Okay. Always remember, it's never too late. That's the one thing I love about making sourdough bread. It's very forgiving. Now, I'm just going to get it into that flour I just sprinkled. There you go. It's in. Never too late. Okay. Let's cut it in half. Something somebody told me once is that if it cuts easily, it was uh, ready. It was fully proofed. So let's get this one rounded. I can't tell you how many mistakes I've made making bread. Sometimes I end up, I think this one I actually added 35 grams of starter because that's just what plopped into the jar. So, you know, don't think you have to start over or you've ruined it or anything else. You'll see when these come out tomorrow how beautifully they bake up. It's so forgiving. You can make lots of goofs and you're still going to have wonderful bread. So let's get that into a nice, tight ball. Okay. There we go. Onto the bread board. As you can see, I'm about 30 minutes behind on making my bread, which was just right. I've done it before where I was, you know, within 10 minutes and it's so confusing using your timers and remembering which one's which. I get confused. Was this the one I just put the timer on? Or is this the one that I just stretch and folded? Or, you know, it got really confusing. So this time I gave it about 20, 30 minutes in between. And it was just right. It was perfect. I didn't get confused. I didn't, this one seems a little wetter than the other one, simply because I added more starter. So it's got a little bit higher hydration. So it's fine. Okay, here we go. Just scoop it under. Pop those bubbles, tighten up. Okay, a little rice flour, oh, a little bread flour on the top, just a little. Don't need much. Put your towel over, cover, 20 minutes re bench rest. 
Okay, now I'm gonna clean up. I'm gonna go put those in my refrigerator. I will final shape, but I don't think I need to film that since you just watched me do it and it's exactly the same thing. Hmm, I wonder if I should do, no, I'm gonna do bulls. They fit in the fridge better. Okay, so I guess that's it for today. I'll come back tomorrow morning when I get ready to bake and make another video and show you exactly what I do preheating my oven with the Dutch oven inside to 550, uh, getting my bread out of the fridge after my oven is at 550 degrees. It takes my oven 45 minutes. So I get up early, turn the oven on. I often go back to sleep for a few minutes until it comes to temp. And then I, uh, I take it out of the Bannetons and I score it, I shape, I spray it, I sprinkle it with flour and put it in the Dutch oven and bake it. But we'll get into all of that tomorrow. And so for today, this is all there is. Okay, happy baking everybody.